Hi, it's Maya here with my April and May reads and receipts. So in this video, as I go through what I've read, how I'm doing with my challenges and what my TBR count is. And there will be timestamps in the description for all the books that I'm going to talk about. My TBR count at the start of the month was 61 books and let's start with the reads. First, I read three books for the unwrapping vlog that I've been doing. I will link it here because I will spoil some of the books in that video. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go watch that video first. I'm not going to talk about these three books because I talk about them in depth in that video. So I'm just going to list them off my TBR here. I read Beloved by Toni Morrison and reading this brings my TBR down to 60 books. I read The Crumbling Chronicles, Volume 1, The Charmed and the Cursed by Ted Nathy, which brings my TBR to 59. And I also read the second volume, The Lost and the Lonely, which brings my TBR to 58 books. I'm also going to mention that I reread the entire Courtney Crumlin series in preparation for those two volumes. Then I read another Puro mystery novel, and that is Taken at the Flood by Agatha Christie. So this is about a family who has grown to depend on their rich relative, but then the rich relative dies in the London Bridge and leaves everything to his young wife. The wife moves to live in the mansion in this village where basically the whole family lives, and cue relatives' money troubles, some resentment, some murders. This had some fun twists and turns, but it's not one of my favorite Poro books. Also, I have to mention that the main young woman character in this has a very questionable taste in men. That was, should I say, very interesting. Um, reading this takes my TBR down to 57 books. Let's continue with a graphic novel. I read Night Eaters, Volume 1, She Eats the Night by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. And this is a kind of fun horror graphic novel from the team who created Monstrous. I was expecting it to be a lot darker and scarier, but it also had a lot of comedy thrown in this. It's set in a modern day and it's about this family with older parents and two like newly adult kids and this scary house across the street. And there's some secrets in the family that the kids are going to learn. This turned out to be very different from what I was expecting and I enjoyed finding out more about the family and their kind of surprising history. The art is a lot looser than the heavily detailed Monstrous. This is an example from the beginning. It has a bit of a more looser like sketchy vibe. It's not sketches but that's kind of the vibe. I enjoyed this and I'm gonna be reading more. I think more is coming out because this is volume one. I do love the heavy world building and the political plotting of Monstrous more but this was fun. My copy is actually a limited edition and it has a signed nameplate from the authors. Reading the Night Eaters brings my TBI down to 56 books. Then I also read one owned ebook, which I talked about in my latest currently reading video, as well as my media wrap up. So again, I won't be saying more about it here in this video because I talk about it in a lot of videos already, but I'm just going to say that the book was Paladin of Souls by Lois McMaster Bourgeois. It's a high fantasy. I really liked it. It's the best thing I've read so far this year. As usual, I also read some library books. I read Ritari Peloton, and reading that, I finally finished the Finnish translation of La Dame de Montsoreau by Alexandre de Dumas. This book was translated, I think it was in four volumes in Finnish. I didn't find this book to be quite as good as Queen Margot. Um, this had sword fights, it had like some funny parts, it had some memorable characters, but the first book was just so, so much more dramatic and enjoyable to me. I also read some comics from the library. I read Monstrous Volume 6, which was a reread, and then Monstrous Volume 7 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Um, this is a dark, dark fantasy series. I continue to really enjoy this. It continues to be good. I'm just wondering how many volumes there are gonna be. Then I read a first volume of a manga series that was new to me, that was Heterogenia Linguistico Volume 1 by Salt Seno, and it was a fun diversion. It was about this linguistic explorer in this fantasy world, but I'm not going to continue with the series. It had a fun format where it was like comic strips, but it was a continuing story. So each page or each spread was like a funny story, but the story also continued throughout the whole volume. And then I read 20th Century Boys Volume 1 by Naoki Urasawa, which was recommended to me by Reya from the Book Finch. And as I've said in a couple of videos now, I'm hooked. You can also find more about this in the media book tag. And with that, we're moving to the receipts. Did I finish the book in my Finnish 5 series challenge? No. As for the buzzword reading challenge, I did finish some books for this. April's prompt was emotion-related words, and I read Beloved by Toni Morrison. Also, earlier this year, I have read Where Angels Fear to Tread by Ian Forster. So, fear and love. 
May was flavor related words and I actually don't have anything for this on my TBR. From the depths of my Kindle I unearthed Rosemary and Rue by Shana McGuire, the first October day book. Maybe I'll read it sometime this year but it's not a priority so I will perhaps have to leave this spot blank this year. Then I also had February's prompt yet unfinished but I completed it. It was just verbs by reading taken at the flood by Agatha Christie. Moving on to the books I bought, I actually forgot to mention something in this section in March because I backed Neon Hemlock's novella Kickstarter, so I got two novellas, uh, the e-books of Hybrid Heart by Iori Kusano and Killing Ground Spawn by Joan Tierney from that Kickstarter. And the first is a cyberpunk novella about an idol, and the second is a murder mystery horror book about a woman who finds a dead serial killer on her auto liner. That was a word that I had to google and apparently it's like a ship that transports cars or trucks. So now moving actually to April's book haul, I have bought A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. This is actually the first physical book that I bought this year and buying this brings my TBR to 57 books. Then from a sale I bought the ebook of Monster She Wrote, The Women Who Pioneered Horror and Speculative Fiction by Lisa Kroeger and Melanie R. Anderson. And this is a non-fiction book about the topic in the title. In May I bought two ebooks. I bought Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation Volume 5 by Mo Xiang Tong Xiu. And I also bought Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. That one was on sale. And then I bought one physical manga. I bought Versailles of the Dead Volume 3 by Kumiko Suekane. And buying this brings my TBR up to 58 books. This is like a historical horror manga. And finally we're moving on to the stats. In April I read 13 books which was 2685 pages and in May I read 6 books which was 1266 pages. And my current physical TBR number is 58 books. Finally I have reached the 50s. I have never been here during the whole time I've done reads and receipts. Let's see if things are going well in my next reads and receipts, which I need to film because it's I'm a bit late with this. But that's all from me for now, and I'll see you in my next video.